Olive Tree Church and Friends, uh, good evening. Good evening, guys. It's so good to be with you guys all. Yeah, we are um, having some fun tonight. Uh, we're not going to spend a, a, a long session, but we just want to spend a few minutes just unpacking Sunday because there were God moments straight through that surface. surface and um, we really just want to put our, our fingers on one or two of them and, and help you guys be able to process that either at home or in your life groups as you, as you chat about it. But before we even get into the preach, Lutz, how was that worship? Oh, my goodness. Hey? <laughs> I mean, it, we, yes, we're blessed with great worship team and guys who know how to lead us in that, but... I think the one thing I, I want to mention is that before even a word was sung, we, you felt the presence of God move into a room. And so um, what I want to say to you um, who, who are looking at and, and watching us this evening is that if maybe if uh, you haven't um, been able to feel that yet, maybe it's a case of going, hey, God, I need to open my heart to what you want to do in worship. Um, there, there, there's the ability to connect with God before we even sing a word. And that felt like that came through in worship, which was just beautiful. Um, and so... We, we want to say, hey, we, if you want to seek God in worship and meet Him in worship, there's an opportunity. You might not even know the words, but if your heart is there and you're wanting to connect with Him and you're open, a God will be there for you um, and you will feel His presence at some point. And so we want to say, keep pushing in, keep um, digging in, keep going deeper with us in worship. Even if you're in your own home, crank that sound up uh, and be open to what God wants to do because I think God's doing some exciting stuff in worship, eh? Let's get into the preach really quickly. Um, Nat spoke a, a, a beautiful message on, on Sunday, Let's, and, and we've spoken about community and the importance of it through lockdown a couple different times, but she put a different spin on it. And I, I felt like God was moving in that. I, I, the first question I want to ask you, what are some of the biggest take-homes that you, you took out of that preach? Well, Tim, first of all, I think you're right. There was a ton of things that she put differently in like ways I hadn't thought about now. If I had to name a few, I remember my heart getting quite excited about uh, two parts. I don't think we'll have the clips for them, but they sit right between them. Uh, one of them was when she spoke about a Trinity friendship. And this, at first, it was for a funny reason. I could just relate. I could relate with being in a place where, or in our own lives, where three of us met Mike and Sia and myself, and we called ourselves the unholy Trinity. I don't know how you feel about that one. But... That, like, that, that relationship and everything that's been built around it ever since and all the rest of the stuff, it, was, it wasn't of our making. It was God's timing involved in all of it. And, and, and we've like, sort of got our own different connections to all that. It. But it's, it's done so much for me. And I hope like, it's done the same for the other guys involved in it. And that, like I say, the people that have been, we've been able to draw in to that like, little community ever since. And like, the life it's brought has been like, super incredible. So that was one part when she spoke about that. I remember like just like... Uh, recognizing that in my own life. And then the second was when she spoke about Moses in the battle and when he picked up his arms and he could keep the staff up, they were winning the battle. And when he got tired and he put them down, they'd start losing the battle. And instead of, in each of those moments, taking a, a moment to rest, people got around him. And that like, is such a powerful picture of community where he didn't have to rest anymore. He could keep his arms up, but with the support of the two people that got around him and held his arms up for him. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And so, yeah, that, that's a cool, like, uh, new look on the, what can I say, the, the benefits or the, the, the importance of community yeah. and how it serves you as, a, as an individual. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know for me also the importance of friendship came through there in such a strong way, you know. And community doesn't necessarily now need to be an entire church or you know, three families worth of people, but it can be the one or two that you commit to. It can be that the one or two you're going, God, I know I need a friend right now that I, that can either help me along the way that we can be strong for each other. Um, and, and that's put this in such a beautiful way, and it brings us to the first clip. Um, and the first clip, she, she summarizes it, and I'm not making a spoiler. Let's just go straight to the clip, and then we'll un unpack it for you. Have a look at this. I want to draw you to this statement that I think will be such a helpful and powerful take home for all of us about what God wants to happen for us in this place of spiritual family. And um, it goes like this. It says, when the I becomes we, if you can just, thank you. When the I becomes we, when we go from this place of me and God to we and God, then illness becomes wellness. I love it. It's, you know, quite a pop psych kind of term, probably came about somewhere in about the 80s. Um, origins are unclear. But when I turned to we, illness 
becomes wellness. And I want to ground that in a verse quickly. I don't have the verse about to come up. But it's a verse that we will all know very well from when we've sat around, those of us who have been in prayer spaces and prayer meetings. We say it and we declare it and we believe it. And I think that it speaks to the same thing that we're talking about today. It says this, Matthew 18, 20, for where two or more gather in my name, there I am present. And you know, he works in the individual, but I believe that he, he, God rocks up in the collective. When we're there together, where there are two or more gathered and I'm present, now we have Here's another bowl that my daughter made. We've got the one with the prophetic word who comes together. We've got the one who's just brilliant at problem solving. We've got the one who's an encourager, the one who's a comforter, the one who makes us laugh, the one who has incredible business solutions, the one who has the contact that you need because they love you and they're after the best for you. And we have this incredible togetherness where God gets to rock up and pitch up in all of his people who have the same will as the Father for reconciliation and redemption and healing and health and wellness. There's so much in that clip. It, I mean, it's so profound. It gives us a great picture. I love that Platon analogy, which I want to come back to. It gives such a great picture of what, of what a, a community in God looks like. Um, but the beautiful thing about this is that, is that community is always how we've been designed. We've never been designed to go it alone. I know you had some profound thought on that, Lutz. I'd love you to share that. Um, around this whole us and God and thinking that's good. Yeah, so my initial thoughts, like as we spoke before, is like it sounds like it sounds like something good to say, to say it's just me and God and that's, that's all I need. That's something if you shared on, on Facebook and stuff like that, it would trend. People would like it and yeah. repost it because yeah. it sounds like something good to say, but when you investigate it, like you say, it doesn't speak to how God made us and yeah. uh, how, he, like, how he intended for things to be even from the beginning. So I love that Nat deals with that. It, we're not meant to be doing this thing as, a, as an I and God thing. We're supposed to be doing it as a we and God thing. That's the way he intended to, yeah. for it to be. And so I think if I had to put a question to, the, to everyone out there, the yeah. same way that I sort of asked myself, uh, and at this moment, like when you ask the question, you can feel free to pause the video and answer this question and start a journal or whatever you want to do, or you can save it for the end. But uh, the question is, and I'm going to put this like loosely, is, where in your life have you seen yourself try to do things with just you and God? When have you depended on that doctrine of, well, it's just me and God, and maybe you supported it with, if, if, if God is for me, who can be against me, but have failed to involve community? And how did that work out for you? Like, if you can just think of past situations that you've tried to go through alone or with you and just God, and how has that worked out for you? Maybe it worked out brilliantly, but chances are it didn't. And then to go forward and say, how can I do that differently? Or how could I have done it differently? Who are the one or two people that I could have invited into the situation? And how do I imagine it could, how do I imagine it could have turned out if I'd done it that way? Yeah, That's so important. I mean, just an observation from my side is, is generally when we're going, oh, it's God and me and I'm going to be okay. It's generally in those seasons when other community has got tough. Or potentially we, we don't really want to talk about what's going on inside of us. Um, and it's in those seasons that we really need friendship, that we really need a community of believers around us to lead us back to God and to share his heart. And I think this is the, the beautiful thing of that analogy that, that Nat shared with the, with the plate, is that that plate of biscuits, while they all um, look the same, they're almost like, like cookie cutters of, of what Jesus might be like. And we, we might all have a, 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 general, a general look of Jesus. This is what we should be, be moving towards is to look like Christ. But in essence, really, each of us bring a slightly different flavor. Um, there, there is, there's different expressions of faith in the community. There's different gifts available. There is a different characteristics and the nature of God shown through different people. And so it's very, very tough to get a, um, a full picture of who God is and a full ministry from the Spirit of God. Unless you've got people around you, you can represent that to you. And for me, this is the most important thing, guys, is that, is that we, we commit to a community who can show us different aspects and nature and goodness of God. I think this brings on to the second clip because what I... The one caveat to being in community is, is that you can be in community um, and not experience all of those things. Um, and here's a beautiful moment that Nats brings be, in, in terms of vulnerability, because I've seen people 
commit to life group and they've been so faithful and they've been there two years three years ten years committing to a community to friends but years down the line people don't really know that much more about them um and so vulnerability within in, in community is going to be the next key thing and so take a look at this clip uh, and then we'll unpack it then a while back my husband sheldon had this word he was sitting at the beach praying and as clear as daylight he had this word for our community that vulnerability would lead to breakthrough now if you think about vulnerability for a moment we can be vulnerable with god but it's not really vulnerability it's more like just honesty i suppose because god actually knows everything but vulnerability is what you do when you actually share where you're at when it's difficult when it's not the thing you want to be talking about, but you take that bold step out and you say, this is where I'm at. And there was this word that that would lead to breakthrough. And we saw that happen in the most incredible ways over the next season. When we take the I and we put it into the we, illness becomes wellness. So this um, illness becoming a wellness in community for me, it, it, it sits so close to home. Um, and I know from, from my own story, as, as I've looked back, there have been times in my life where um, I have struggled. And I've gone, like, I know someone else probably needs to be speaking into this, but I don't want to share. Um, and it's amazing how lonely those seasons become. Uh, and generally, when uh, Nat, if you go and look back at her preach, she talks about her Trinity friendships and asking God for two friends that she can really go deep with and share with. Um, and God supplies that. I think God is faithful. I mean, his scripture says he will place the lonely in families. Um, and so God is faithful to providing the community that you need, even if that's one other person. But so important to that is actually allowing that person in. And I know seasons in my life where I have not allowed people in and been the poor for it. Just like you had mentioned in your video clip, it's going, hey, if you're in a bad season, who you have around you can either make it better or make it worse. That was good. But the, the key for me is, is the vulnerability side. And so it, it, I, I know there are other times where I have known my faultiness <laughs> and gone, this needs to get cleaned out uh, and have people there. And when I've shared it, the burden becomes lighter. And I think this is the beauty, beauty that we discover only in actually practicing vulnerability and practicing allowing people in is that we realize God's people are there to bring healing. Um, and, and so... For me, this, this is where, as a community, we need to commit to. I think many of us, if you're watching this stream already, you'll probably un will, will acknowledge the importance of community, but the importance of vulnerability in it and allowing people in is going to be important. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, I think I could just echo what you say, and maybe um, the way I see it is, is that a lot of the things that we're afraid to speak to people, like it makes sense because like some things are embarrassing. Mm -hmm. If I think of habits and addictions and all the rest of that stuff, it's, it's embarrassing, you know? Um, and to have the courage to say that to people, take like it, it takes a lot. But the reality of that is that it sets you free. Mm. You know, when something has been brought into the light that's been in hiding, mm. like you said, you become all the better for it. It yeah. takes away the power from this thing. And so I've loved to see that in community where there was something that was bullying you in silence and you, like you were embarrassed by it. Yeah. As soon as you name it, um, as hard as it is, and maybe it'll be embarrassing for a while, but its power is taken away from you. You've taken back the power from it. And so I completely believe in the idea of being vulnerable with your community and that it benefits you. And also it, for younger people, not just by age, but I mean in faith, looking up to you, it sets like an incredible example. I say like in our group, when I think of it, like Mike is so good at expressing, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on. This is what I'm going through. And it sets the tone for how we then start to open up and we, all of a sudden you find out, hey, he's actually struggling with something I can relate with. I've been there, you know, um, and it gives you courage to name the same things. And yeah. so I really uh, echo that sentiment. That's so good. I, I think the one thing I, I, I did mention earlier, which I really do want to mention, is, is, the, is, is the word breakthrough. Because they said vulnerability leads to breakthrough. And I think this is the case. Is when we generally, when we want breakthrough, it's when we're in bondage. It's when we're at a point where we don't know how to actually move forward unless we get breakthrough and that's when we're praying god i need breakthrough but breakthrough comes by being vulnerable with others you know that every person comes to a point in their lives where 
where you realize, oh, there's faultiness inside. I've got my own demons to fight here. And, I've, and, and sometimes, that, sometimes that can even be literal. And you need community around you for that. Um, and so I think, you know, Lutz had a great question um, earlier and going, hey, where, let's look back on life. Where have I decided to go at me and God and, and go, hey, God, it's you and me. And we're going to go, how did that plan out? And it's good to reflect on that. But I think another good question then, the next one is, is who am I going to choose to be vulnerable with? Because it is a choice, it is a commitment, uh, and you get to choose wisely in this. But I think that there needs to be a choice nonetheless. Who do I choose to be vulnerable with and show people who I am on the inside or what I'm struggling with and allow them to speak into it? Um, and then what am I going to share with them? And maybe tonight, if you're in a, in a life group and you're ready, maybe even tonight is the, t- is, is the start of you sharing and going, hey, guys, I'm struggling with this and I'm, I need you to pray with me. You know, James has said this so clearly, and, and this is such a beautiful picture of community where, where, where James um, implores us, going, confess your sins to one another. So the addictions and things like that, those get broken in a environment of connection with other believers. Um, and so he says, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other that you might be healed. And so in community, when I becomes we, then illness becomes wellness. And so I hope you guys enjoy this conversation tonight. Yes, it might be a commitment, but this might be a commitment to some of the most beautiful moments of community that you're going to see in 2021. Uh, And so take this opportunity uh, and we hope you enjoy your week. We'll see you soon.